Hey folks, how's it going? It's Seller Spark here. And today we're going to be doing another alternate history video, and this time in 1896 between William Jennings Bryan and Levi Morton. So in 1896, in the actual election, we saw William Bryan against William McKinley. And McKinley just essentially did a front porch campaign in Ohio. He didn't leave the state and he just campaigned from his house. Uh, and I read that around the country campaigning wasn't really a thing. I mean, Brian did it. He did like train tours across the plains and up to California. So McKinley ended up winning the election by holding on to the Midwest by strong margins and getting a lot of support from the business establishment and financiers on the East Coast, like in New York and PA. He actually just sweeped New England. And that's how he won. I mean, he won in the population centers. Where, whereas Brian, on the other hand, Brian did really well among farmers and agrarians and those who supported free silver, which typically tended to be farmers who were in support of lower tariffs, while a lot of the industrial places in the north were supportive of higher tariffs on, on uh, products. So what would happen if Levi Moore and the vice president under Benjamin Harrison, if he decided to run instead of William McKinley? I think Morton would have done worse than uh, McKinley. I don't think M Morton would have had the same success among the bu business establishment nor the same popularity as McKinley due to his association with the Benjamin Harrison, Harrison administration. The Harrison administration had a lot of corruption and that's why he was really unpopular after his term. So 1896 really favored the Democrats and William Bryan was a pretty motivational speaker. He brought the floor to with this, excuse me. He brought the people to their knees to the floor, is what I'm trying to say. And he was very motivational. He was evangelical. He was a devout Christian. And that kind of turned off a lot of people uh, with his rhetoric that it was too extreme. But in this situation, I do think he'd be favored over Levi Morton. So let's get in this scenario without further ado. I just wanted to provide you with that background. It's important to know what was going on at this point. So let's go. All right. So we have the South, obviously. Also, it's important to mention that Levi Morton in the Harrison administration was supportive of uh, rights for African-Americans. And that would be very unpopular in the South. It was pretty segregationist through this time. So it was called the Lodge Bill. And Free Silver Republicans actually joined with Democrats on that bill. So... Morton was a proponent of that, and I think Morton would also moderate the line on, um, I'd say, gold as well. So he would be like a free silver Republican, basically, trying to toe the fine line on the gold standard issue. And I really think that would turn off some people in the border states. I think he would be seen as equivocating on the issue. That really wouldn't go over too well for him. So I'm going to say, and due to, in addition to the opposition of the, the South, excuse me, the South's opposition to the Republicans' high tariffs, I'm going to say that a lot of these states would go to William Jennings Bryan. So all the South would go to Bryan for this fact, as well as Tennessee, North Carolina, and Virginia were heavily Democratic at this point. I'm even going to get Brian, Missouri, and the Great Plains and the Mountain States because a lot of these states were pretty radical in support of free silver. And Brian wanted an, un, an unlimited coinage of silver 
as it pertains to the currency instead of like a more fixed ratio. So that really appealed to farmers as well as Colorado, Nevada, all these states are really in support of free silver. And I'm not sure if Brian will moderate his stance on silver in this scenario. It would probably help him in a lot of areas like the Midwest. But this campaign was a lot about, it was mostly about the currency issue and tariffs more than anything else. California and Oregon were close in the scenario, in the actual scenario. The Midwest, I do think that Brian can make inroads. Indiana has been a pretty historically evangelical state. So I'm actually going to give Indiana to Brian, even though it tended to be more Republican in future decades. I'm going to give it to Brian. Same thing with Iowa, also a bold call, but more agrarian, agricultural. I do think, despite supporting tariffs, I think it would go to Brian. The border states like Kentucky and West Virginia do do more in equivocating on the issue of the gold standard. I don't think he would be perceived as someone who's strong on that issue. So I'm going to give the border states to Brian. And now we have the Midwest and the Northeast. So a state like Pennsylvania, I think, would be a bridge too far for Brian. McKinley won that by a lot, as well as New York. I do think that Morton would have less appeal to the business establishment and a little bit more criticism for his ties to the corrupt Harrison administration, but he would still get the job done here in a lot of these states on the East Coast because they had heavy Republican Party machines in the cities that overwhelmingly were Republican at this point and supported high tariffs and business activity. So I'm going to say that they would go to Harrison. Same thing with New England here. Actually, all of New England would stay with Levi Morton. So the Midwest is trickier to ascertain. Illinois would be really close. Same thing with Wisconsin, but I'm going to say Wisconsin, Michigan, Minnesota, due to their protectionist tendencies, would go to Morton. Ohio would be close. I'm going to give Maryland to Morton. Also, I think Brian would do well on the West Coast, and he's already elected, but he will win Oregon, Washington, and California just due to the train trips he took there and he campaigned extensively out there. Despite the despite California's affinity for gold due to the California gold rush, I think that Brian will make a substantial pitch to those those miners there and win them over because Morton wasn't going to be too strong on gold anyway. So I do think that Brian could have a chance in California and it was really close in the actual election. So we have three states left here and Brian's already won. Ohio, Illinois, and North Dakota, which are all won by William McKinley in the actual election. Now, Morton, I don't believe was from the Midwest. I believe he was from New England. And McKinley undoubtedly got a home state boost from being from Ohio, which was a swing state. Morton was from Vermont and on the East Coast. I do think that Brian could do well in more of the rural parts of Ohio. And also would do well in central Ohio, but I don't think he would do well enough in the cities in order to win Ohio. So he might actually see Ohio narrowly voting for Levi Morton here. I do think that Brian could win it. It would depend on turnout in the cities. I'm just going to make a safe call and say that Ohio would narrowly stay for Morton. And then we have Illinois, which would go to Morton as well due to Chicago. And Brian would do well in the exurban and rural parts of the state would fall short by about 2%. And then we have North Dakota, which was heavily rural, which I'm going to give to Brian. So this is what I have for the final map here between William Jennings, Brian, and Levi Morton. 
Brian 237, you need a 224 at this time, and Morton 210. It would be a narrow victory for Brian, but I do think against someone like Morton, he would win the election. So let me know if you guys agree with this scenario down below in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you would have the same outcome for this scenario or not. And I'm curious to see your insight and hear about that. Also, some announcements for the channel. I plan to be doing some live streams again. Uh, just let me know when you would like to see those and what topic you would like to see them be about. Also, I'm establishing a Patreon again. I might be establishing, excuse me, depending on the request for a monthly newsletter, I could establish that for you. Let me know down below in the comment section or in the community tab of my channel. I'd appreciate that as well. Check out the podcast, the social media, the website. I'm updating the website. And be sure to stay tuned for new uploads coming soon. So I appreciate your support. And that's all I have for now. I'm going to leave it there. And this is Stellar Spark signing off. Till next time, folks.